Can you see me, hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so do you have your fruit? Yes. Good. So what are you guys having? What are your fruits? Strawberries. I love strawberries. Grapes. Watermelon. Excellent. Watermelon is a good fruit as well. Kiwis. Kiwis? Oh, kiwis. I'm looking forward to tasting that one. We got blueberries. Blueberries? Mm. I put an avocado in there. Yeah, you put an avocado in there. We got tangerines. Okay, so what you want to do is start off with your bucket. The first thing you want to do is clean up your bucket. So you want to get you have your bucket already. Can you guys see me? There's a couple ways that you can clean your bucket. You can use the traditional way, ice, soap, and water, scrub it really good. You want to scrub your bucket, the lid, completely well. And your airlock, your airlock should be pretty clean because they're packaged, but uh, I clean them just in case. You can also clean it with a little bit of bleach. So just a very little bit of bleach and water and then wash it out very well. And then you want to rinse it completely. That's the first thing that you want to do. I'm pretty partial to OxyClean. So usually when I uh, make wine, I use a little bit of OxyClean and it's usually about a, a teaspoon amount is what you're gonna need. Drop it in my bucket. And then I fill my bucket with water, warm water. I take my blueberries out. I'm using frozen berries for mine. So while your bucket is cleaning, you're going to get all your fruit together. So you're gonna need a, a pot, pretty big size pot for your fruit. Now, you can cut up your fruit, you can smash it, you can do whatever, but you're gonna end up boiling it. Boiling it is the best way of killing pretty much anything. And then that way you don't have to put all of these chemicals in there to sit there and kill, kill all of the, the natural yeast that is gonna be on the surface of the fruit or the, um, uh, or the bacteria that's on the surface of the fruit. Because those bacteria and those yeasts, right, they're gonna be competing for the yeast that you have that you're putting in there. And the yeast that you're putting in there, they've been modified. And often because they're modified, they're, met, they're not as strong as that wall yeast. And that yet wall yeast will actually outgrow them. And then you'll get a kind of a weird taste to your wine or a weird smell if it's bacteria. So you wanna to try to prevent that from happening. So that's the reason why you're gonna do the boiling to get rid of it but you don't want to overboil because then you start cooking your fruit too much. Well, you want your fruit to cook, sort of, to kind of get the juices out, but you don't want to alter the flavor too much. You know what I'm saying? Wait, what? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you at first. Um, what, were you, what were you supposed to boil, the fruit? Your fruit. So you're going to cut it up or smash it or blend it. You know, so you, you, it's best if it's pureed, that's kind of good. Oh yeah, we have a blender that we could, that could do that. Okay, so 
put your bucket in and like soap and water, let it soak for a minute to try to get all the bacteria off of it. Or like I said, a little bit of bleach or a little bit of OxyClean and just let it sit. And then we'll come back to that towards the end because you're not going to need it for a little bit because everything is going to be real warm and you want it to cool off when you put it in there. I'm sorry, so you want us to boil the fruit and then blend it? No, you could you could boil it and blend it, or you could just and, and that's that'll work very well, or you could blend it beforehand. So what fruit are you using? If you're using a fruit that's like an apple or something like that, it's best to boil it first and then blend it, or boil it and then smash it, you know, with a potato smasher. Okay. What about with the watermelon, Dr. Henry? Oh, watermelon is real simple. You just cut it up and then you can put that directly in the pot and it's just gonna, all of the water is gonna start coming out of it like easy. Oh, okay. Okay, so you just wanna cut it up in little pieces and just put it in the pot. Watermelon is like one of the easiest ones. because It's mostly just water. Wait, Dr. Henry, um, yeah. what if you have oranges or tangerines? And oranges oranges yeah. or tangerines, you can also, so this is kind of good with the oranges and tangerines. Um, it's kind of good to peel them, but you can do it without peeling them. If you're going to do it without peeling them, cut them, you know, cut them in half or cut them in, in quarters okay. and then boil them and then mash them. Okay. And then what you're going to do uh, is going to mash them really well with like a potato masher. Do you have a potato masher? Uh, I have a blender. You have a blender. Oh, perfect. Use a blender. So you're going to boil them, and then you're going to blend it. And I can uh, blend them with the peel, right? Without peeling them? So you can use the peel. The peel is going to add flavor. Uh, but the thing is that you definitely want to make sure that you boil it well, because particularly citrus, citrus has a an antimicrobial um, component in their skin. And so a lot of citrus fruits will actually kill off the yeast. And so you'll end up having to add more yeast. And so you're going to end up add, adding more yeast anyway, because you're working with citrus. Oh, but you're using SCOBY. So in that case, you're still going to have to still add a little bit more SCOBY than you, you normally would. That's the one for kombucha. <laughs> OK. Can you hear me? What was that? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, what about mangoes? Mangoes are delightful. They actually work really well. So what you want to do is just basically cut them, right? And you could actually, I always like to peel them, like peel the skin off because it makes it a little bit e easier. Um, and so you just want to make sure that you get get everything off of the, the seed. And then mango make a beautiful wine and you're gonna end up really nice and juicy and everything. Anybody have pineapple? That's my other favorite. Yeah, I do. Oh, you have pineapple and mango. Yeah. Wow. Are you gonna do a blend? 
Yeah, I'm going to put both of them together with some apple. Creative. Would you recommend the same for a kiwi, like pick up skin and everything? Yeah. Yeah, especially because it's fuzzy. Yeah. It doesn't matter so you're do I boil it? You're going to remo be removing all of the kind of the pulp and you're going to end up with mainly the juices for skin. Do I boil it? So I would actually, for the mango, I would boil it, you know, and then, and really that one, you could probably get away with just smashing uh, because after you boil it, it gets really, you know, nice and ripe and, and really easy to work. So the other thing that you guys are going to be fighting with is is the water. So the water that we use, tap water, it actually is is um, it has is fluorinated. It has fluorine in it. So what you the best way of, of using it, you can get away with using it because yeast will process the fluorine, but it, it inhibits the yeast growth. So it grows really, really slowly. And um, so the best way of kind of working around that is to boil your water, like your tap water, boil it really good. And then just use that boil tap water when you go. But you're gonna be putting some water in there and you're gonna be topping off with water. And so then after you have that boiled, then you, you know, cross the line water, you know, distilled water, anything like that, which starts adding to your cost, you know. Was there any amount of water that we were supposed to? So you want to start off with about um, roughly seven pints in your little bowl, you know? OK. So, and that'll help get your fruit started. And I'm sorry about lecture. You know, I apologize to you guys for that. I was having internet troubles. At first, I thought it was because I didn't pay my bill. And I'm like, you know, they took the money out. So let me find out what's going on. Dr. Henry, um, so I would I would like to add like a honey type of like taste to my wine. Uh, okay. Do I have to wait towards the end to do that? So you, there's two ways of doing a mead, right? So you can use because you're gonna kind of make a mead. Is that what you're planning to make? Yes. Right. So I always say start off with some honey initially, and then you sweeten it towards the end with honey. All right. Okay. So you use it because the honey that you start off with at the very beginning, it's going to give it this little flavor, but it's also going to give this a very unique aroma, right? And so it, it's it's like a wild type of honey smell to it, you know? So you you remember the strawberry, strawberry mead? Did you taste the strawberry mead? Or not the strawberry, the blueberry? The blueberry, yeah. The, the watermelon the, mead. The blueberry one, it was really good. Yeah. But if you smell it, it has a very unique smell to it. Yeah.
uh, like cactus fruit or cactus thing that someone gave me to my berries and and I'm adding uh, some bananas. So we don't want to boil the fruit too much, just a little bit, and then put it in the blender? No, you want to give it a nice boil, but you don't want to burn it. You want to, you want to, you want to save, save the flavor. And so when you cook things too much, like way too much, it changes the flavor. It starts caramelizing stuff, and we don't want it to caramelize. Oh, so you, okay. want to, you want to get it to a boil, overcook it. Okay. Do we keep the water that we boiled it in? What was that? Do we keep the water that we boiled it in? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just want to keep all of the flavor. So I'm adding a little bit of hibiscus to mine. Oops. So I throw it all over my. Okay. So Dr. Henry, you said in terms of water, we need seven pints. Yeah, about seven pints is the way you start it. Watermelon is so watery that you don't need a lot of it. You just need a little bit. A little bit, okay. Yeah. So you just want to bring it to a boil and then puree it? Uh, you don't even have to puree yours. All you have to do is bring yours to a boil and just smash. Oh, okay, I see. And then I also have a mango I want to add to it. So if you got if you got to mix the fruit together, you can just put it together and then you can blend it all together. So that'll right. be easy. All right. Thank you. Now remember you are working with hot liquid, so be careful.
see this here. You guys got your fruit going? Yeah. Okay. And after we boil it and blend it and stuff, it says um, to add everything except for the yeast. So we just mix it in the pan with everything? Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. And, and what I also recommend, I like eating my sugar. And again, this is the thing you don't want to do. You don't want to boil your sugar too much because it caramelizes. I like mm -hmm. getting my sugar dissolved. And so I actually will boil that in with the, the fruit before mm -hmm. I puree it. You don't have to do it. You can do it afterwards. What do you recommend, though, Dr. Henry, from your experience? So from my experience, I always like to get it in there going at the same time because then it makes it a lot easier. And then you just get this nice little lump of everything, you know, towards, you know, towards the end. All right. So what you're going to be using today you have a lot of extra, right? So you're gonna you need your your uh, your yeast nutrient, which is in the packet. Can you guys see that? Of course, you're gonna be using your yeast, and you're gonna be using your pectin. All the other stuff is gonna be used throughout the process your pectin. So that's what you're going to be using today. Now, the beauty of it is, is that the yeast that you're using, right? So you're going to get a lot of this yeast saved up. So what you could do is you can save up what we call a starter. So you can get like a, one of your conical tubes or a little bottle or something like that. At the very end, you wanna save up some of that yeast. That's the yeast is still viable, it still lives. And you put it in the refrigerator and it'll be good for about a year. Or scoby. You can save a little bit of the, the kombucha that you make and then it'll be good for about a year as well. Dr. Henry. Yes, can you hear me? 
Yes. Do you recommend boiling everything together? Yeah, I recommend boiling everything together. So, and again, you're only going to be using three three um, ingredients today, other than your sugar and your fruit. So you're going to be using the yeast nutrient. You're going to be using the pectin, and you're going to be using yeast or Kobe. And we add all the, uh, what is it, four pounds of sugar? Yep. Okay. Wait, so we add the sugar to the boiling pot of water with the fruit? Yeah, it's best to put it in the boiling pot of water. So it dissolves and it gets blended evenly. So, sorry, while the fruit is boiling, add the sugar to the water as well? Yep. Okay. Does the amount of sugar affect the taste? Like if I add another pound, will it be a little bit more sweet, sweeter? What was that? If I add five pounds of sugar as opposed to four, will it be a little bit more sweeter? Uh, so you're gonna do most of your sweetening towards the end. Right now, what you're using the sugar for is to make your uh, ferment, so your ferment, so your alcohol or your, your lactate. Gotcha. Okay. So that's primarily what's going to be happening right now. All right. Dr. Henry. I feel Does like I'm doing a cooking show. What was that? Does the type of sugar No, uh, it doesn't matter. The type of sugar doesn't matter. So uh, usually you use uh, sucrose. Um, sucrose is cheaper than glucose. Uh, so, you know, that's table sugar, regular gran granulated sugar is fine. If you're using, um, some people like using the natural sugar where it hasn't been a uh, processor, that's fine too. Cane sugar is fine, right? Brown sugar is fine. Did you say cane sugar? Yes. Cane sugar is, uh. Sucrose as well, so. All right. Yeah. Did you go okay? What was that? What did you is say? Brown about? sugar okay? Brown sugar is okay, yeah. That'll add, that'll add a little bit of that caramel flavor to it. It'll work. So brown sugar basically has a little bit of maltose in it. Uh, which is another form of sugar. Um,
was that? What is this again? That's your airlock. Okay, got it. Oh, no, por los frijoles. Pero <laughs> just delicious. What are you laughing at? <laughs> What are you laughing at, Abby? What's going on? Nothing. Um, when you say weigh and measure fruit, do you mean like weigh the whole fruit that's two and a half pounds or weigh each fruit individually? No, no, no. Uh, it's like the whole, just make sure you have enough fruit. In other words, weigh to make sure you have enough fruit. Okay. So I don't have to either weigh or measure it? No. Okay, got it. Yeah. Because I'm assuming that you waited when you were in the store, right? Yeah. Okay. You said seven That's, pints of water, right? Well, that, yeah, seven pints is usually a good starting point. You know, mm -hmm. you could use less than that, depending on what fruit you're working with. Okay. At the end of the day, you're going to bring it up to volume. So you're going to bring it up to a certain point in the, in the bucket. So I got my fruit pureed.
Okay, sorry about that. How's it going? All right, I got my fruit Fine. pureed. Excellent. Okay, so you got, have you added the sugar yet? Yes. Okay, so you're good to go. So all you want to do is kind of let it cool off a little bit, and then you're going to add the yeast, the, the yeast uh, nutrient. And then you're going to add the pectin, but the pectin has to be added when it's cooler because the pectin is an enzyme and you don't want to denature the enzyme. Then what you want to do is um, I would I would actually um, boil water. Dr. Andrew. Yep. yep. How much sugar do we add while it's boiling? boiling. So what fruit are you working with? Oh, you're, you're doing a blend. So I would say um, you're going to add pretty much all five pounds since you're doing a blend of your sugar. So put in like two and a half, half of it, and then mix it, and then put in the other half after you, if you have room, of course. And you said we keep the water, we boil it in, right? Exactly. You want to keep all of the liquid, all of the fluid, because you're going to need the liquid. The liquid is going to be, um, it's going to be adding everything to, I mean, it's going to be, you know, you're going to be using the liquid to make the wine, you know? Oh, okay. So I, when I'm done blending it, I just put it back in the pan with the water? Yep. Okay. Dr. Henry, do I have yep. to puree my pears or can I just chop them? You can chop them. Okay. Sorry, I didn't hear that last part. Add the puree back to the water? Yes. Okay, sorry. That's okay. We added to which water? What was that? Can you repeat that, please? We added the puree to which water again? To the water that you originally boil, you boil your fruit in. And then we're going to boil it again? You, you don't have to boil it again, because after you've already boiled it, you're just going to put that puree in there, and you're going to add your sugar in there. And so oh, you want to okay. bring all your sugar, get all your sugar dissolved, and then you're going to transfer, like after you have everything done, you're going to transfer it to your bucket. To your bucket. You want to clean up your bucket, make sure it's totally clean. Dr. Henry. Yeah. How smooth do you want the puree? It doesn't have to be super smooth. What was that? It doesn't have to be super smooth. Okay.
So after it's already boiled and pure, pureed, um, we that's when we add the yeast nutrient, the spark, the potassium. Yeast, sorb yeah, you're gonna go ahead and add the yeast nutrient to that after it's been pureed and boiled. Oh. And then you're gonna let it cool off some before you add the pectin. And you're gonna cool it off a little bit more till you add the yeast. And so but before you add the yeast, you wanna sit there and bring it up to volume. And then, uh, so if you take a look at your bucket, if you take a look at your bucket, right? It has the, the, the rim itself where the lid sits. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, so what you wanna do, you wanna bring it up to uh, halfway of that bottom edge. So the very, so you have two edges. Halfway between that bottom edge is where you want to bring the water up to before you add the yeast. Oh, okay. Okay. Of just like regular water? Of uh, just regular water. Yep. Okay. But we add everything else before then, right? Except for the pectin? That's right. So you want to add everything except the pectin and the yeast itself. Okay. Okay. Okay, sorry, can you repeat what we add, like in what order again? So you have all your fruit pureed, so then you're gonna be adding your yeast, your yeast nitrate to your puree. So can you guys yeah. see it? You see it right there? Yeast nitrate, it's in the baggie. Okay, and then you're gonna let it cool down a little bit, then you're gonna add your pectin. Okay. okay, and then you're gonna let it cool down. It needs to cool down to about 42 degrees at, you know, 45 at the highest, 42 is the best um, degrees before you add your yeast. Now, when you get your yeast, what you're gonna do with your yeast, you need to activate it first. So you're gonna rehydrate your yeast. So you're just gonna basically add some warm water to it. And then you're just gonna let it sit there and sit for like five minutes or so. Yeah. And then uh, Taylor asked if it, if it matters if it's too hot before we add the yeast nutrient. No, it, it doesn't matter because the yeast nutrient is just basically, it's ammonia. It's, it's basically an ammonia base. So it just adds that nitrogen that, um, that is going to be needed for the yeast to continue to grow. Once it's in solution, it stays in solution pretty well. It won't come out of solution, so it'll be good. Okay. So then you said cool down and then add, I'm just writing it on the chat just to keep it there. Cool down and then add pectic and then cool down and then add the SCOBY and or, or, or the yeast, right? Usually you want to let it cool down. When you cool down, you want to let it cool down for about like two to three hours before you add the yeast because that's okay. usually about the, the temperature. And the best temperature for it to be at is about 70 degrees, 70 so degrees when it's outside, 70 ish. So you can put it outside, um, but bugs like the smell of it, right? Because it's gonna be making that vinegar and stuff. And so they're gonna be very attracted to it. You can also put it in the house, but bug like, bugs like the smell of it. So you don't want it to be too cool, but you also don't want it to be too hot. Got it. Just taking notes and putting it on the yeah. chat. Just... So anywhere from like 70 degrees to 90 degrees is the good range because uh, yeast work, it grows really well. Yeast grow really well at 37 degrees, which is your body temperature, which is like 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Jessica. Yeah, Mauricio? How do we do the puree? Do we... Add everything into the blender, plus the water or just fruit? Yeah, so no, you're gonna add also everything into the puree. Um, and then you add it to your bucket and that's what he was saying. You're gonna bring it up to volume with, you're gonna add extra water to your bucket. So basically you're just pureeing everything together. Okay. Yeah. So I blend it with the water I was boiling the fruit with, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So I might have missed this, but um, 
once we get the puree and everything, we're using the water that we build it to put it in the bucket. Yep. And then bringing it up to volume with just regular water, right? That's right. Okay. Yep. Dr. Henry, how much water? Wait, never mind. <laughs> I'll just add, I'll boil the fruit with the water, and then once it's boiling, I'll add the uh, sugar, right? That's right. Okay. While I'm, that is boiling, then you can clean I, up everything. Yes. This, like this? Yeah, that goes in there, exactly. But you want to be careful how you stick it in there. You want to be firm. But have you cleaned your bucket, though, Abby? Yeah. You did? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so when I do the airlock, I do the soap and water in here? Yep. Okay. Got it. And then what you guys, you're going to actually in your airlock, when you're ready to do it, what I recommend that you guys do, because it, it's going to attract fruit flies. It likes fruit flies, love the way that it smells. So what I recommend that you guys do is put in water, but put a little bit of soap that water, like dish soap in the water, and then you're gonna fill up your your uh, your airlock with water to about right up to here. So about halfway. Can you guys see, like halfway there? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know what's going on with my camera there. I can't even see it, but yeah. Okay. okay. But how do I add? Oh, I open the top lid? You open the top. Yes, there you go. I was like, wait a second, how does this work? <laughs> Amazing, huh? When you look at it. <laughs> it's just a pull. It's a pop-off. And you said add a little bit of soap in, the, in there with that water? Yeah, just a very little bit. Because then what happens is that fruit flies love, love wine. And so then... Yeah. What you're going to do is kill all the fruit flies and keep them from trying to get into your wine. So, oh, okay. <clears throat> this area so has a whole lot of fruit flies. We have to let it cool down at about 42 degrees to um, add the yeast. That is correct. Okay. And if you want to, you can actually activate your yeast early so that the, it's really going. But if you're going to activate your yeast early, put a little bit of sugar in there so that they actually start growing well. Because they have a little bit of nutrients that's already there, but you add that sugar kind of just a little bit though. Not too much. what is the temperature for the water when we activate the yeast like what temperature should it be it should be about 40 40 degrees 37 to 40 degrees okay wait dr henry you said 40 degrees what about the 70 the 90 range what is that for um the 70 and the 90 range well 70 degrees Celsius, uh fahrenheit not celsius uh, oh, oh I, i'm sorry 30 i mean it should be between i was thinking celsius yeah that's why i was and, like yeah so then 70 to 90 fahrenheit that's right. got it okay yeah. 70 to 90 american units <laughs> right yeah <laughs> I was trying to act like I was European or something.
Okay. Dr. Henry? Everybody doing okay? Um, I got a question. Yep. Um, do we add the pectin before we add the more water to fill it up or uh, after? Uh, you add the pectin before. Okay. Dr. Henry. I already did my puree, so I just put it in the bucket and add the water that I used to boil it, correct? And then add extra water to bring it up to level? Yep, but you want to you let it cool off first and add your pectin first because your pectin, you want to kind of get your pectin distributed by you adding that water to help distribute that pectin. And so what pectin does, so kind of like us, you know how we clot? You know, like if you get cut, we clot. Are yeah. you guys with me? Okay. So pectin is kind of like the clotting factor for fruit. Um, so pectin enzyme, you guys are acting, actually acting pectin enzyme, which causes the fruit not to clot, essentially. So if a fruit get hurt, it actually starts producing pectin. Pectin enzyme actually breaks down the pectin.
that back in after the PRA has cooled down, correct? Yep. And the thing is, is that pectin is, like I said, it's an enzyme. It denatures, but it has to refold. But every time that it tries to refold, it can refold the wrong way and making that enzyme not active. And so if you let it cool down, then it'll keep its shape or most of its shape so it doesn't have so much trouble refolding. Okay. Thank you. Um, so after we puree our stuff, we put it into our bucket and then we bring it up to volume and then we add our yeast nutrient? Yep. Well, no, you want to put your yeast nutrient in before you bring it up to volume. Okay, yeast nutrient, bring it up to volume, weight, and then pectin. No, no, uh, the other way around. So yeast nutrient, let it continue cooling, then add your pectin, and then you bring it up to volume. Got it, okay, got it. And then we add the yeast after we bring it up to volume? No, before. You said the yeast nutrient? No, just the yeast. No, you add the yeast when it's cool. So you want to do that before you, I mean, after you bring it up to volume. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you want to make sure, because you're leaving a little bit of room for that yeast. You don't want to put too much um, water in there when you're adding the yeast because it'll actually boil up. It'll start uh, making a lot of uh, carbon dioxide and then it'll push out the yeast and, and some of your wine and stuff like that too. And the airlock. And you don't want that. Hey, how's everybody doing? That good? Good to hear.
Don't worry. You guys will be doing the uh, outro and I'll be able to have audio. That's fine. So you can calculate how much alcohol you should be making. Or how much light kit you should be making. So nothing's going to happen to the bucket when we put our like hot substance oh. in there, right? It's very durable. Trust me. Okay. I don't want to like melt me. <laughs> Just don't put it on the pot, I mean, on the stove, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you. No problem. So, Dr. Henry, once we're done chopping our stuff, we put it to boil. Yeah. Once it's done boiling, what do we do next? Okay, so you have the option, you can puree it. Did you add sugar? No, wait, I have to puree? You don't have to puree. You could get away, you could smash it, mash it up but you also want to add your sugar to your solution, so. Okay. So like you have a, a, a beater, a lot of beater, what is it called? A masher, potato masher. Yeah. It works really great with the, with the pears. Pears are beautiful, they end up working out really well. I did a whole bunch of pears this summer. Okay, so while it's boiling, then I smash it and then I add the sugar. Yep. Okay. Let me do that. <laughs> I like blending it. I usually get better. Uh, and we're adding all the sugar, right? All the five pounds? Yes. You can be adding uh, yours. Yeah, you, you get that. Uh, about 200 pounds per pound. How sweet are your pears? Did you sample? Wait, what? I couldn't hear okay. anything you said. How sweet is your pear? Did you sample? I... It's sweet, but like, eh. Yeah. Well, it is sweet. Then I have to put a full five pounds. Because that was in the fifth inch. I'll just add the five because I don't know. I kind of only sampled a little piece. Yeah. Dr. Henry. Yes, Mauricio. I added my yeast nutrient already. So at what temperature do I add the pectin? So you just want to let it cool down just about another 10, 15 minutes, and then you're going to add, go ahead and add the pectin. And so the activated yeast is the very last step after we cool it down to 70 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, activated yeast is the very, very last step.
How's it going? It's going good. We're about to add the um, yeast to the first one. Cool. I see messages in the chat. Dr. Henry, why do we smash the fruit? Because then you're getting all of the, all of the flavors out where you, if you kind of keep it together, it just kind of meshes together and then the pectin doesn't break it down the way that you want it to. Uh, I don't like the grapes. Why do you think they smash the grapes? Got you know, it. They stop the grapes. Yeah. yeah. And we really want the juices, you know, the juices. And you also want some of the some of the fiber that's in there is going to add, or some of the fiber has some of the the other proteins that have the aromas and the, the flavor to it as well. So you okay. want to kind of get that in there, because otherwise, then you just have sugar water, right? Yeah. Are we going to be straining this eventually? Yep. Okay. Yeah, and then, after. And then after, how would we... Oh, what was... Go go ahead. No, go ahead. How would we store this after? Uh, so I recommend that you start saving bottles. You can save water bottles. In your case, kombucha could be in, in those plastic bottles. But the thing is, is that it has to be done cool because kombucha is still alive. It's a live, active... Uh, bacteria uh, that's going to be in your in your thing. Yeast uh, is going to be the same way. Um, so what we're going to do is you're going to actually slow the growth uh, a little bit by adding the, the herbal or sorbate, the calcium sorbate. So that slows it down, but it's still going to be able to grow a little bit, but very slowly. So I'd say like water bottles, or if you have those glass bottles with a cap, so anything that you may have saved up.
We're not going to keep the kombucha in the bucket? No, uh, I mean, you can. Uh, but the thing is, is that you want to, at a certain point, because kombucha is is a combination of, it's a mixture between a really weak, weak, weak yeast that makes very, very little, little alcohol and a bacteria, right? Uh, SCOBY. SCOBY is just basically, it's a yeast and, and uh, bacteria that's kind of mixed together. And if you let it sit too long, then you get, you'll end up with a little bit of a, a sour alcohol. Um, and so you guys, yours is going to be about at no more than like 17 days, 14 to 17 days. You can actually have something after three days, depending on your flavor. Some people like it a lot more fruity flavor than a lot more sour flavor, you know, but uh, usually it's about seven, um, from 10 to 17 days that you guys are going to let your sit and then you want to be cool. How would we test the alcohol content? Well, there's a couple of ways. Um, usually, you test the alcohol content by how it floats um, in a hygrometer, or you test it by, uh, or you can actually uh, uh, use alcohol processing. Um, so, there's a little kit that actually lets you know your content of alcohol. So, you can get a little a tablet to sit there and let you know, kind of like the breathalyzer. So there's actually like a, a pH strip sort of like thing that tests alcohol content. Okay. And we can also use like old wine bottles, Dr. Henry, to refill. Yep. Yes, you oh. can use old wine bottles. Yep. Okay. You no, know, drink bottles as well. They're, they work really well. Okay. Hey, is everybody good? Yeah, I'm just waiting for it to cool down. I forgot I was on mute. Um, I have a question. Yep. What is this for? That's your airlock. So your airlock is going to be put in the hole in the top of the lid. And that keeps, so it keeps oxygen from coming in because you want it to, you want the yeast to grow anaerobically. And so uh, when yeast grow anaerobically, they make alcohol. Would it be bad if I put the pectin in, if it's at 120? Or, hold on.
120 degrees what uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius? Fahrenheit? It's actually 130. 130? That'll be fine. Okay. So I'm using grapes. Is it okay if the skin or the grape isn't completely broken down when I'm smashing? Oh yeah, it? it's great. It's okay to use the skin because that's gonna. Are you using red grapes or white grapes? I'm using black grapes. Black grapes. They're beautiful because they never add a nice, nice color. Yeah. So I have the puree form, and then we have the yeast nutrient after when it's puree. Dr. Henry? Yep. So for you said, I'm sorry. So for the yeast nutrient, it doesn't have to be a specific like temperature? Yeah, it doesn't have to be a specific temperature. You can actually do it at any point. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Henry? Yes. Is it okay to add? Yes, it's okay to add the yeast nutrient. And then if you let it cool off a little bit, it should be ready to add the pectin as well. Yeah, I heard it cool down. Did you guys taste it before you add the yeast nutrient and the pectin? We were supposed to taste it. Yeah, you're always supposed to. Don't you sample when you cook? Well, no, it's because I. <laughs> what was that? You said no because, because it, of what? Because I need to kick the flag before.
Okay, how's it going? Those fruit are looking delicious. So I put the yeast in, in the first bucket. Do I just put the lid on? The airlock in? Um, that's what I was gonna ask is how do you how do you put it in? Okay, so what you wanna do is you see your lid, right? It has that hole. Uh -huh. You're gonna stick the airlock in there, but you wanna hold it on the other side so that you don't push the uh, the rubber gasket through. Okay. So, and you just wanna put it in there firmly. And then you also wanna put in water into your airlock after you get it in there, okay? So a little bit of soap and water. Okay, soap and water? Yep. Just a little bit of soap. Okay. And you guys have to send me an, uh, a little message on what the fruits that you guys have so that I can start uh, licking my lips to, you know. Why? Because <laughs> you know you, you're... You're afraid that I'm going to go buy a wine bottle, pour it in my bucket, and it, just exactly. the fruit. Yeah. What were the measurements for the, the lines in the bucket again? So if you see the second line, so you're going to bring yeah. one up halfway between the second line. So, okay. uh, let's see. so you have the very top of the bucket. You have the very first uh, groove, and then you have the second groove. So you want to bring it up halfway past that second groove. Okay. Okay. Okay, Dr. Henry, once my pot is done boiling with the sugar and my whatever fruit in there, um, do I put in the bucket yeast or do I pour that in and then I pour the yeast nutrient? Okay. So you want to put your, your, all your, your mixture, uh -huh. right? So you want to add your yeast nutrient to that in the, in the pot. Oh, so in the ahead. pot? Yeah, go ahead and add it to that. And then you're going to let it cool off a little bit, and then you're going to add your pectin. So I'm adding this one? Yep. While it's boiling? You can add it while it's boiling, but usually I let it boil, and then I add it to it. OK. Yeah. And then once it's cooled off, I will add the pectin. I'll add this to the mixture as well. That's right. OK. Yep. And then the very last thing that you're going to add is your yeast, but you want it to be between 98 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 to 42 degrees Celsius. And that will be also in the bucket, right? Okay, hold on. Yeast nutrient. Okay, let me go add this. Oh my gosh. Very, very good now. Dr. Henry, I'm late to the party, but I'm here. Excellent. <sighs> um, so I have a question. Yep. I, uh, <gasps> plums but they're not like super ripe. Is there any way to like expedite that process? Like do you- well, You're gonna you're gonna be adding sugar. All you want to do is get that flavor, right? Okay. And so uh, it's okay if they're not super ripe. It kind of adds a little bit of flavor when they're a little bit tart anyway. Okay. So what, so what you're gonna do, you're just gonna add a little more sugar. So you're gonna probably add the five pounds, the total five pounds rather than just two or three pounds of sugar. Okay. okay. And did you did you put up the process? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll start reading that then. This is 
so hard to stick in. Get that? it, Abby. Get it. This is so hard. I'm going to give up any time. <laughs> you could do it, she man. Okay. Push it in or you hold Come it. Come on. All you have to do is push it in there. There you go. <laughs> Push it through the hole. You can do it. So it does. It it doesn't want to. It's not working with me. <laughs> Little loop. Does that, does that look like the correct level of uh, liquid? That looks nice. Yeah, that that's Maybe. good. That is actually good. That's probably a little too much, but it'll work. Okay. I'm not seeing it. Hold on. Let me go to. Look for a wine kombucha. Yeah, I'm just gonna go to the grade and do it that way. Go to home, it's like on the corner. <clears throat> there it is. Yeah, it doesn't need to go all the way through, Abby. It just needs to go through. So if you look at the very bottom, it has these little holes. It just needs to go through enough so those little holes are through the... These little holes, these little holes are not working with me. I hate these little holes. So it just needs to go through about that far. Can you see it? Oops. Yeah. You see? Mm -mm. This thing won't work with me. I know, Abby. It's just picking on you. I told it. I said, you know, if you're going to pick on somebody, you got to pick on Abby. <laughs> You know how her labs go. I know, I hate them. Don't explode it. I have a feeling this wine thing is gonna, something's gonna go wrong. And... Dr. Henry. Yep. It's 40 degrees Celsius, a good temperature to add the pectin. You said 42 degrees? 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, yeah, you should also be adding your yeast now too, so. All Dr. Henry, are we going to need citric acid at any point? Um, let's see. You have mango and so mango yes. watermelon. Yeah, pieces. and so what I would do is I would take I would take one of your sisters. She has tangerines. Is that correct? Yeah. So I would take one yeah. or two of her tangerines and I'd put it in your 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 mix. So just a little bit of hers will go in your mix and it'll be fine. Okay, and if you have like lemon juice, is that okay as well? Oh yeah, that'll be perfect. So Wait, like uh, about two tablespoons of lemon juice. Okay, thank yeah. you. Dr. Henry, do I need yeah. citrus? I'm using pears only. You're using pears only? So yeah, if you have citrus, use citrus. If you don't have citrus, you can use vinegar or you can use Kool-Aid, the Kool-Aid packet. I'm gonna use the Kool-Aid packet because I don't have it. Okay. You, I, imagine if I didn't ask you, my wand would have been a total fail. <laughs> no, it'll still work. It just takes longer because then the, the environment has to be acidic for the yeast. Oh my God. Something is always going wrong with me. It's okay. You know, it's simple. Don't tell me I don't have a clue. Oh, I'm gonna tell my 
Dr. Henry, I don't yep. have like cheese, a cheesecloth or anything to strain. That's all right. Well, because I have raspberries, so. Oh, so yours will be easy. Okay. All of the all of the seeds will go to the bottom towards the end, and then anything that Straight else will kind of float up to the top, and you can just kind of. Okay. Because yeah, I have I have plum, raspberry, and um, cotton candy grapes. Oh, cotton candy grapes. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't know those were a thing. And I was like, well, you got to have wine with grapes. And it said cotton candy. And Casey was like, you've never had them. And I'm like, no, I, I've never had them either. Now I'm curious. They just sound so good. <laughs> Dr. Henry. Yep. Okay. I don't have Kool-Aid packet, but I have two lines. Can Perfect. I squeeze them? One. Yeah. One of them will do. Okay. I'll squeeze one. Yeah. And just add it. Abby. Yeah. Add it to your boiling, your boiling pears. Okay. The whole line or just the juice? The whole line. Oh, got it. Uh, it I, I just take, take off the peel though. Okay. If we're just waiting for it to cool down. Is it okay if we head out? Yep. All right. Thank you, Dr. Henry. I'll see ya. Make sure you guys have it on there tight though, because otherwise you're not gonna make alcohol. So in three days, we'll test it out. You'll kind of get an idea. And then look to see if there's bubbling. So did you guys put, put water in your, in your airlocks? Is there water and soap in your airlocks? You add water and a little bit of soap, right? In the airlock? That's right. Yep, and then you want to watch and see if it goes up and down. That'll let you know if you're getting fermentation. If it's not bouncing up and down, that means that there's a leak somewhere. And so it's it's going through oxi um, um, respiration or, or aerobic respiration, so. I feel like I should have waited. No, Cassie, you're 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 fine. You're with me. I'm way behind either. I'm way behind too. <laughs> I'm like. Dr. Henry, when you say the airlock should be like bop going up and down, like how regularly should it move? It's not gonna be very fast initially. But there are going to be points where it'll, it'll go boom, 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 boom. Okay, boom, right. But boom. it's not like right away, right? No, it takes okay. a while to get to that point. Okay. I just want to make sure because it wasn't moving. Yeah. Well, no, it's, initially, it isn't. So for about a day or so, it isn't. And then about the second day, it should start moving and it'll start moving real slow. You'll get boom. Okay. Then you'll wait a little bit and it'll go boom. All right. Okay, Dr. Henry, let's say it doesn't do it because I feel like I'm going to be that person. I don't know why. Then that means that you uh, you had a leak somewhere. So you want to make sure that your lid is on real tight. Okay. So after that third day, if you don't see it go up once or twice, and, and a good way of determining whether or not you have a leak is when you push on it a yeah. little bit on the top, it'll pop up. Okay. So that means that you have a good seal if it pops up. If it doesn't pop up, you don't have a good seal. You have a leak somewhere. That means your lid is probably not on there well, or you have a leak around the airlock itself. And if you have a leak around the airlock, there's a couple of ways that you can do it. You can get some caulk and put caulk around that airlock. Uh -huh. Okay, so that probably means that your gasket messed up or you can get another gasket. And then you have those guys at Home Depot or hardware stores. You just bring it in there and say, I need another one of these. Okay. Dr. Henry. Are we supposed to add another? Are you supposed to add another? Another line to the puree or just the one that we put to the, are we? No, you just need the one that you put in there. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So that's going to give you about the right pH that you need to be at. So about a, 
a lime per two gallons or so will be about good. So once we're done with, um, once we airlock it and stuff, then we just have to wait. We have to let it for a minute. Three days. We'll actually wait till next week. Oh, okay. On Monday, we'll have we'll have you guys do it on Monday. Okay. And these little um containers that had all the like the little colored ones, we just dump those out, throw them away. No, no, no. You want to keep those? Okay. Oh, you're talking about the ones that you've used already? Yeah, yeah. the ones with yeast and the pectin and all that. Oh yeah, you can toss those. Yeah. Okay. And Dr. Henry, did you get my email? Uh, let me check. I don't think I did. Because it was about the exam and the exam upload. Yeah. Oh, it should be fixed now. Isn't that right, Mauricio? Was it working for you? Yes, it's working now. Okay. Wait, so, was yeah, I, was, I didn't have internet connection until about, let's see, 15 minutes after class started. 20 minutes. When did I make it to class, Mauricio? Um, half an hour. Okay. No, twenty five minutes. Half an 25 hour. Minutes. Class started. Twenty five minutes. Everyone's just Doctor Honey, I actually had another question too. Um, I can't remember which one it was, but we were to calculate the length and density, and um, so there were two different values, right? But it only had one box, and it wouldn't let us put in this. Like I tried to do a comma, it wouldn't let me do a comma or anything like that. So I just put in the one that I had for density okay. and it ended up marking it as wrong, but I don't know if I just like put in the wrong one or what, cause there was only one box. But yeah, you okay. said in the question, it said length and density. Yeah. Okay. So in that case, what I'll do is I'll, cause you have, you uploaded your, you upload it in your short hand. Yeah. I, I mean, I will right now. It wasn't available when I took the test earlier, but I will right now. Uh, you're cutting out, Dr. Henry. That's it. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I said I apologize for that. It should have had two boxes there. Okay. okay. Yeah, I just want to let you know because I was like, I don't know if I got okay. it, if I actually got it wrong or if it was just that I put the wrong number, you know? Yeah. So, no, I'll take a look. I'll actually look at it in thoroughly. So, okay. 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 All right. okay. Thank you. No problem. All right, we're, we're done, Dr. Henry, so we're probably going to go. Okay. And we have class on Monday, right? Um, yeah, you guys have class on Monday. Okay. All right. Bye, Dr. Henry. Have a good weekend. Yep. Everyone else have a good weekend, too. Bye. 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 So, Dr. Henry, am I just putting enough water in a pot to boil the fruit, or is there a specific amount? So you want to put in a little bit of water because you can also get that in the sugar as well. So, so just a little bit? Yeah. So like um, seven pints or so, you know, give or take. Okay. I'll try to catch up so I don't keep you. Yeah. No, it's okay.
Okay, Taylor, how's your how's yours going? Good. It's good. I'm still just waiting for it to cool down. Okay. Dr. Henry. How's yours going? Oh, mine's going good. I had a question. So I have the yeast in warm water. Do uh -huh. I add it after I bring it, bring the puree up to level or yep. before? I... Yeah, so you want to bring it up to level. So you want to bring it just a little bit above the second line or the second, uh, I guess it would be the third, the third uh, rim part. Okay. Does the water have to be boiling? No, I mean, not boiling, but hot? Or warmish, or just needs, normal water sign. It needs to be warm for the yeast. Warm. Yeah, the yeast. It needs to be warm to get it activated. No, no when bringing it up to level, I know that. Doesn't have, you know, it should be at that point. It should be kind of cool. I mean, it should be about forty-ish, thirty to forty degrees Celsius, or you know, seventy degrees Celsius room temperature. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Henry, do we need to peel the plums and the grapes, or is the skins okay? Skins are fine. They, they actually add color. Okay, cool.
So is size going to be a difference, like diced, chopped, the nope. smaller the better? Um, the, if smaller the better, because then that way, if, if you're not pureeing, it, it'll get nice, even. If you are pure, pureeing, then it doesn't matter. It just makes it a little bit easier for your blender. So I need to puree everything together before nope. I boil? You, you don't have to. Um, you could just mash it, you know. Would it be better just to puree it? It's easier. OK. Of course, you tell me this after my kid's asleep. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, it's actually, so I boil it first, and then I puree it, because then it's nice and soft, and it oh, doesn't okay. kill your blender. OK.
I'm looking forward to this time here. Your uh, cotton candy grapes. What's that? I'm looking forward to this time. Cotton candy grapes on one. Yeah, it's, I mean, legit, like. Wow. Okay. Never heard of it before, but it's, it's a real thing. Dr. Henry, how cold does it have to be to add the pectic? So it can be like 130. It just, uh -huh. you don't want it to be above 100 degrees Celsius. So you don't want it to be like burning temperature. Okay. Above 100 Celsius? No, you don't want it to be above 100 degrees Celsius. You want it to be below 100 degrees Celsius. Dr. Henry, wait, don't leave. <laughs> so after, so I'm done, like my thing has cooled down. Then I add yep. the pectic, right? What was that? Add the pectic. Yeah, go ahead and add the pectin. And then I put this on top or do I wait and then add the yeast? You, you, you want to put it on top to make sure that nothing gets in it. So just kind of cover it. But you want to put your, you want to go ahead and put your airlock through it before I add my yeast. Um. 
hari sering dong. Okay. Yep. Yep, Mauricio. Is this level okay? Yeah, that's a good level. Yes, that's a good level. I am of need of your assistance again, Dr. Henry. <laughs> so we add water, soap water to this little apparatus D. Yes, you're going to add water, soap and water to that. A little bit of soap, and then you're going to fill it up halfway. And then you're going to put the little cap on there, on the little lid. Dr. Henry. Can you hear me? I, I can hear you now. Oh. Well, what about the other ingredients? When will we be adding those? When, you, when you're doing a cleanup, so if you're doing SCOBY, you don't, you're not really going to clean it because you want the, the, that yeast and the bacteria because they're probiotics. Um, and so you're not going to do cleaning up with those guys. But you're going to add the, the sorbitol or the sorbate at the end, not scorbital, at the very end once it's completely done. So you're just going to hold on to it. If you're doing the yeast, then you're going to do some cleanup. And so we're going to add it on the seventh day. We're going to add some precipitate to cause things to start precipitating out. So Dr. Henry, today we're not using the potassium or the other three? Nope, you're not using the other three yet. Okay, so those go in my little bowl. If we're making wine, are we using SCOBY? No, you're gonna be using yeast. Okay, then get rid of that one. <laughs> so we add soap to this like this, Dr. Henry? No, just put it in like a little cup and then pour just, all you need is like a couple of drops. Because all you're doing is you're keeping the, the flies away. So it kills the flies, essentially. OK. I think the longest thing of this is just the wait time. Yes. The cooling off and everything. Oh, did I do this right? Is mine right here? Let me see if I can show you. Yes, that's the way it's supposed to be. Good job. Good job. Yes. <laughs> Got Dr. Henry, you said seven pints of water in with the fruit. Yeah, about seven pints. Um, I don't think my container's big enough. You don't think your pan is big enough? Um, this is three. Okay, the so then that's fine. Just okay. start off with that. And you have all your fruit in there? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so just start off with that. That'll be fine. Okay. Um, and I did taste the grapes. Yes. And legit tastes like cotton candy. Are you serious? <laughs> okay, so now, yeah. now I need to go find them. Where did you get yeah. them at? Winko. Winko? Okay. Yeah. At first, I was like, no way. This, yeah. this, this is bogus. And I was like sitting there while I was washing them. I was like, um, yeah, it, it legit has like the aftertaste of cotton candy. What? All I heard was that was going to make it and then it cut out. It's going to make a great wine. 
Oh. Yeah, sorry, my network is not, it's not acting right today for some reason. <laughs> Do I need to get this to a certain temperature? You want it to boil. Okay. Because what you're doing, you're really, the biggest thing that you're doing is killing all of the, the natural yeast and bacteria that's on the fruit. Okay. Okay, so when I add the pectic and the uh, nutrient, I add it to this, right? No, you add it to your pot. Okay. And then good. you can add that, yeah. No, you're a boiling pot. Yeah, my boiling pot. Yeah. And then the yeast will go in my boiling pot or will it go in no, this? No, your yeast pot? is going to go in the, into the bucket with, so you, the next thing you're going to do is put everything into there. So after okay. you mix everything up, you're going to pour it into there. Got it. Okay. But now I need to let it cool. What was that? I need to let it cool before I add the yeast. Okay. Well, you want to activate your yeast right now. So what you want to do is get a little bit of warm water. So uh -huh. like tap warm water and then put your yeast in there and mix it. Uh -huh. And then let it sit for like five minutes or how long ever it takes for it to cool. Okay. But my, my juice and everything has to be cold enough. You know, you can start it now. It doesn't have to be cold before you, when you add it, it has to be cool. Yes. But you can get it started. You know, the longer you let it, it warm up, the more active it'll be once you put it in there. So let me go do that right now. Abby, which ones are we not using? We're not using the Scooby, but you're not well, using, you're, are you're you not using the Scooby. You're not going to be using the Sorbitol yet. You're not going to be using the K meta sulfate, okay. the potassium meta sulfate. You're not going to be using the Sparkle or Spark, and you're not going to be using the ben, the Beninite yet. So just the the yeast pectin, nutrient, yeast nutrient and the pectin. That's it. Does it matter if this clear thing has a little bit of soap in it? Like it, in the it bottom doesn't part? Matter. Okay. Because I heard that part to put soap in it. Dr. Henry. Yeah. 
Yes, Mauricio. So after putting the lid on, how long do you let it sit? Uh, so yours is cool already because you said yours was about 40 degrees. Yes. Okay. So then did you put your airlock into your hole? Yes. Okay. So, and you put water in your airlock? Yes. And so a little and so Good. Okay. Good. Okay. So then you want to put the lid on tight and well, you want to add the yeast and go ahead and put the lid on tight or the SCOBY and put the lid on tight. Wait, we add the SCOBY? Yeah, because you're not of age yet. So. <laughs> so you're going to be adding SCOBY. He's all right. Yeah, I added the yeast already. <gasps> Mauricio. <laughs> and then I get the confiscated, so it'll be perfect. Uh, I guess you do. Don't argue there. Abby, how much water did you use for your yeast? Um, here I'll show you. Just a cup full? No, like, can you see it? Yeah. Just like a little bit. A dabble? Yeah, like a dabble. It doesn't need a specific temperature, right? Um, for this? You for just your yeast? It just needs to be between 70 and 90 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit or 30, 30 to 42 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, Celsius. Celsius. Yeah. It just spilled all over. <laughs> Give me the whole So, what do I do in my case? What do you mean by in your case? You're, you're good. I mean, that's you're good to go. You, you already put the yeast in there, so you can't, it's not like you can take it out. So, I guess I'll end up giving it to you. What was that? <laughs> I guess I'll give it to you. <laughs> That's right. You're, you're very generous. I, I'm glad that you're thinking about me. And, it, and yours sounds delicious. You said mango and... What was mango, it? Mango, pineapple. Oh, yeah. See? Apple. You, you, you have all my strawberries. favorites in there. All my favorites. So it'll be perfect. But we'll, we'll let Wait, you do this? all of the hard work of processing it. Dr. Harry, did I put too much water in this? No, that's fine. That's perfect. That's good. Dr. Henry, I'm at 63 degrees Celsius for the water for my yeast. That's good, yeah? 60 degrees Celsius? 63 degrees Celsius. That's a little too hot for your yeast. All right. So you don't want to, you want to drop it down. It needs to be between, it needs to be between 32 and 42 degrees Celsius. All right. So. Is, is that everything, Dr. Henry, that I need to do today? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you looking out for me. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Guys, take care. See you on Monday. I'll see you on Monday. Yeah, and again, sorry about earlier today. Wait, Dr. Henry? Buster? Well, everything was shut down. I don't know. Um, yes, Jessica? Or is that Selena? It's Selena. <laughs> okay. Um, so after I add the Pentic, I just add the Scooby, right? I don't have to worry about the yeast. Yeah, that's right. Yours is already, it's technically in solution. So all you need to do is just dump it in there. Ah, okay. And then okay. cover it with the lid? Yep. Put the lid completely on and make sure you have your airlock on. Okay. Can you help me put that in? <laughs> put what? Put my airlock in my lid. Yeah. Take a bite of this. No, it doesn't need to be now. I'm still waiting. Oh, Pastor. 
Which one did you go to on the next side? Tacos Galactico. The one by Molly and George? Or no. The one where I do the cans over out Murray. Oh, and way over there. Lovers. How do we know if our yeast is working when this water, just water? It smells like bread. Are you still there, Mauricio? And you don't need a lot of water for the yeast, Dr. Henry, right? Nope. I accidentally spilt a little bit of soap water in the bucket. Is that bad? Uh, if it's just a little, it should be okay. Um, 
hopefully that you have enough heat down there and it's not going to be so sensitive. But you, sh I mean, SCOBY in your case, SCOBY, you should be okay. 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 So Dr. Henry, is there anything um, else that I need to do to get ready? I have my yeast soaking. Okay. I have the tap filled with water and a little bit of soap. Perfect. Um, nope, Hulk, is, Hulk is gonna put it on for me. And then I okay. have the pectic and the yeast nutrient standing by. Cause you said those are, I'm gonna need, but the sodium or potassium sorbate and all the other ones I don't need. That's right. Okay. so. I'm literally just waiting for this to boil puree and then I put the sugar in. Yep. So you could actually, you can put the sugar in as it, as you're boiling right now. Oh shit. Yep. Okay. But shoot. So, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll work on that now. All right. I am done for now. I will see you on Monday. All right. See you okay. then. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. I wish I could say the same thing. <laughs> All right, Dr. Henry, I think I'm also going to call it a night. Um, I can't close it. I don't know if I'm just too weak. You got to really put your arms into it. So what I do, I put it on the floor. And I put my body, my whole body into it. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll keep doing that. Yep. And then you know that it's completely closed because when you push on it a little bit, your airlock will pop up. Ah, okay. All right, then I'll, I'll try doing that. Um, okay. All right, thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Too. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye, Jess. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. You too. Dang. What's up, my doc? Hey, what's up? So you're doing the lab too, huh? Ah. Dr. Henry, I'm not even supposed to be standing still right now. So you're welcome. <laughs> and I don't trust him cooking. <laughs> or with my grade. <laughs> she trusted me to go get all those tacos right now, though. Yes, she did. <laughs> Oh, we need a bigger pot anyway. Damn, Daniel. <laughs> Are you sure I'm going to need more sugar, Dr. Henry? <laughs> Is it to the rim? Um, almost. And I, we're not like, we're like halfway. Okay. So you put, is that, uh,
That's a 10 pound bag, right? No, it's a four. It's a, it's four. a 10 pound bag. Oh, shit. Yeah. So you're good. Okay, we're good. Yeah. Okay. We'll do about half of it. I was looking at the kilos. Yes, girl. So you, you really want yours to be uh, top notch, you know? <laughs> you know me. <laughs> and I can't even taste the damn stuff. <laughs> you got two bags of this shit. <laughs> I was looking at the kilograms, damn it. Shut up. Don't refund my ancestors. So, yeah, it's that Irish descent, you know? <laughs> I, I get it now. Irish and Canadian. I don't know what's going to happen here. Well, yeah. German, too. So that would be And German. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Well, how much is it? <laughs> yeah, probably about a little more to go halfway. That's good. I don't need to make anything with sugar. Oh, I had those bananas. I was going to make banana bread. Yeah, we'll hold oh, wait. Oh, we didn't have flour. We didn't have sugar. So I couldn't. So we got that. Dude, those raspberries like disintegrated. <laughs> oh yeah, that's gonna have a really nice taste. Plums, raspberry, and cotton candy grapes. Yeah, I I was trying to be creative. I got yeah. mango, and then I was like, I don't think that's gonna taste right. That's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna I'm looking forward to tasting it. <laughs> you can thank Casey. Casey suggested the. Well, actually, the plums and the, the cotton candy grapes. I was like, well, grapes yeah. for sure. Plum wine is just ultimately delicious. It's just that, like, it is so good. <laughs> I've had a plum wine before. Plum, blackberry, pomegranate. Everything at Casa de Frutas. Yeah, Casa de <laughs> Yeah. But now you can do covers. Yeah. <laughs> See how this goes. Don't, don't push it. This. Oh, Dr. Henry, did you see my um, email about the egg one? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, so I only have one 250 beaker. Can I use the 100 beakers for the eggs? Yeah, if they fit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or you can use something bigger. That's That'll work be fine too. So, I'm sorry, what? I said, or you can use something bigger. That would be fine, too. Yeah, I have the 250 and then a 500. And, okay. then, well, and then the other one's supposed to stay in the vinegar, so I could just leave it in the cup, right? That That's right. Take... Yep. Oh, I'll just do that, then. I should probably do that now.
And so when I did the calculations, Dr. Henry, there was um, like a ridiculously light amount of sugar for the 15. Do we just try okay. to get it like as close as possible? Yeah. Okay. So how much sugar do we need it for the eggs, Cassie? Uh, it was it was like 0 0.03 and some change grams, and then it was like two twelve point five milliliters of fluid, I think. I'll have to, I'm getting, I'm going to get my paper. I'll let you know right now. Hold on. Okay, thank you. Because I have a feeling I put more. All right, Abby, so I have 0 0.0375 grams of sugar in two 12.5 milliliters of water. If you're using the 250 beaker. Okay, yeah, because for water I put like two milliliters. Two milliliters or 200? 200. Okay, I was like, two is not that much, love. No, two hundred. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was thinking if I put a little too much or I put enough. How much sugar are you using if you're using? How much sugar are you using if you're using? Two fifty. We calculated out to be zero point zero three seven five grams. Grams? Are you sure? Because you're doing percent percent mass. Um, that's so what we, if, if you have 100 grams, I mean, if you have 100 milliliters of water, then I say if you have 100 mill, milliliters of solution, then you have about 10, I mean, 15 grams of sugar. But we were going off the 250. Yeah, and if you're going up to 250, then it should be 30 point, I mean, 30. 37? This is what we did. 37.5. Okay, so the density of water is one gram per milliliter, not one gram uh -oh. per liter. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna go have to fix my. So, so multiply <laughs> that by a thousand. My point three, point zero three seven five. Yep. Okay. So that should be thirty seven point five. Yeah. Okay. Whew. Yeah, I hate the cooling process. What was that? I don't like it. It takes forever to cool down. What's the temperature supposed to be at? Uh, 32 to 42 Celsius. So then that's that's going to be between 70 and 100, I mean, 98 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah. Okay. So I got a long way to cool. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. Mine's still low. Well, you know. well, I'll have a little bit. It's still around 60. <laughs> Ooh. 
Are you making some too, Dr. Henry? Yeah. Yeah, I use bananas. Uh, I use berries. I use hibiscus and apples. Oh, I should have used hibiscus, man. I have a tree in the back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm calling it sake to me. Uh -huh. Nancy, your hold a pop still in here. All right, so 37.5 grams into the 212, Dr. Henry? Yep. For the 15? Yep. I am so ready for bed. Yup. <laughs> now my dogs are going to go nuts. Hold on. <laughs>
Do you want the same volume in each for the eggs? Or does it not matter? Dr. Henry? Uh, the same volume from each. Uh, you yeah. just want to make sure that it, it it's the egg the egg is submerged. Okay. Yeah. This one looks so horrible. <laughs> Have you seen, look at this. Oh, it looks like scrambled. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know how I'm gonna get it out because it's on top of the other two. <laughs> Scoop it. It's stuck to the other one. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm doing operation right now. We just needed to weigh them, right? Yep. Before and after? Yep, that's right. That cracked one, Dr. Henry, is like half the weight of the others. Really? Yeah. Is that going to be okay? Yeah. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. And it's not wanting to completely submerge. That's all right. Okay. We'll make it work. All right, I'm just making sure I'm gonna screw it up, screw up another lab. That's right. It's learning experiences. Labs are supposed to be about learning, right? <laughs> Baby Jesus. <clears throat>
Am I to add the yeast nutrient and the other into the while it's cooling now? Yeah, yeah, you can actually do that. Okay. And you can actually add both the pectin and the yeast nutrient if it's under 100 degrees Celsius. So. Okay. Discount double check on that. Don't touch my project. You said it had to be under 70? Yep. Okay. Nope. Okay, Abby, what is your temperature? My temperature is at, oh, it keeps rising. 65. Degrees Celsius? No, 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 not 65. Sorry, my bad. 55. 55? Yes. Okay. 55 Celsius. So that's, that's not too bad. You're almost there. Almost. Yep. Do you want us to chuck that or bring it back to you? What? The SCOBY. Uh, you can keep it. I have a I have a whole container full of it. I don't drink kombucha. <laughs> so um, I don't think I'm gonna make my own. You never know. You may change your mind. You know, you go on this health health kick after you have the baby. <laughs> Abby, if this turns out right, you know we're going to have to print out these instructions. Instructions. For the wine, so we can make our own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't forget our steps. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
Just because it's 10 o'clock, Dr. Henry, and I know you have to go. Do we just, um, I just need to wait for this to cool to 70 degrees Celsius minimum to add the nutrient, the yeast nutrient in the other one. And then before I put it in the bucket, it has to be like room temperature. Yeah, so you want it to be about room temperature or a little bit above. Um, it can be, like I said, it can be up like to 98 degrees. So like that's 37 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Um, or it actually can be up to 42 and it'll be okay. The yeast will survive. Okay. They'll survive up to 45 degrees, but you don't want to push it because these guys are like special yeast. So. Okay. Yeah. And then that's when we put it in the bucket and add the yeast when it's at that 30 yeah. to 42. Okay. And we mix yeah. it, we stir it, and then put the lid. Uh, you don't even have to stir it. You can just put the yeast in there. It'll actually settle, and it'll work its way down. Okay. 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 Because I have to. Do I puree it before I put these two nutrients? And the other so one in? You have yours already boiled, right? Yep. So you can actually puree it now, or, or you could leave it as it is and just kind of mash it a little bit. It'll kind of work the same way. The key, the key is that you want to get the flavors out of the, the fruit, you know? Right. Which the best way to do that is puree. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So I'll keep you guys, what I'll do, I'll give, I'll make Abby the co-host and then I'll make, who has the most stable internet? I don't know. Cassie, probably. Cassie, so then I'll make Cassie the host. Do, we, okay. do you want us to continue recording? Uh, no, you guys are good. You don't have to continue recording. Okay. I, see, I see you guys making progress, so. Yeah. Is that, I mean, if that's all we have to do, do I have to check my pH um, after, or does it matter? Um, really, what you're going to do is try to, let's see, you have grapes, you have grapes, uh, yeah. plums, and, Raspberry. and what? Raspberry. And raspberries. Um, so what I would do, I would add in, if you have lemon juice, add some lemon juice in there. If you don't I have, have lemon for my tacos, <laughs> how much? I said I have some for my tacos. <laughs> See, that would be perfect. How much do I need? Um, so for two gallons, you'll need about one lemon. You know, oh, or if you the lemon juice is typically concentrated, so I got a Myers lemon. I just turned around and saw it. Oh, perfect! Nice. That'll be perfect. That'll be more than enough because that's okay. a big boy. Yeah. 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 So or half of that, half of that will be fine. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. So don't even worry. Just put it in. Don't even yep. check the pH. Yeah. Because okay. your pH with the limit, it'll be it'll be right at where it should be. Okay. Yep. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then and you said it's okay if the the soap is like in here. Yeah, that's fine because the air is going to be pushing up, so it'll just make bubbles. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. I'm gonna finish okay. this. Right. Okay, you guys have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.